day, good day, good day, beloved. Welcome, welcome to Faith Without Borders. I'm your host, Pastor Calvin Saul. So glad that you're here with us, joining us. We're looking forward to an exciting time together. A time for thought-provoking and solutions-driven conversation. Uh, we are in the month of May. So much going on. Uh, and uh, we just want to uh, say uh, today, uh, Cinco de Mayo to... Uh, all of my Latinx sisters and brothers, uh, as you can see, I'm, you know, I went and I found my, my, uh, my Mexican shirt here just to uh, show solidarity as we keep on keeping on. And then uh, today, because we're going to be zooming in on Panama, I uh, could not help but wear my Colon hat. Uh, that's that's kind of uh, 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 where I'm trying to get to here pretty soon. Uh, so uh, we're looking forward uh, to that. It is also Mental uh, Health uh, or Mental Wellness Month here in the United States. So we're going to touch on that as well. And we're going to all put it in the, in the pot and let it stew. Uh, and I'm glad when the stewing takes place here on Faith Without Borders, uh, I ain't got to do the stewing by myself. And so today I have some extraordinary uh, guests with us uh, uh, from both the United States and from Panama, locally and globally. And so glad that they're here uh, with us to explore our topic for the day, Decolonizing Black Identity, Excavating and Exploring Colorism in a Global Context. We're doing this, of course, in commemoration with Mental Health Awareness Month here in the United States, as well as Black History Month in Panama. And uh, that's news, you know, I think for uh, a lot of us who are in the U.S. because we are used to uh, Black History Month being in the month of February, even though we celebrate who we are and our blackness 365, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. That is just a culmination for us and a springboard as to what we need to be about. So I don't need a specific month, you know, uh, uh, to uh, celebrate my blackness. However... Uh, given that that's a designated one, we, we, we use that to amplify uh, who we are and what we're about. And we're glad that now, uh, being aware of uh, what's going down in Panama, we can uh, connect it with that. Uh, and maybe uh, other countries can choose other months. And then guess what? You know, we just go around the whole 12 months and just, you know, kick it, right? So uh, glad today to have a um, uh, guest with us, Aligia Grinaldi is here. Uh, from uh, 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 Panama. She's joining us uh, from Panama. Ligia, are you here? Good morning. Right here, Pastor. Good morning. So How are good you? to see you. You are you are joining us from Panama City. That's not too far from Colón, right? Yes, my parents are both from Colón. Yes! I knew I had family there. I knew it. Come on now. I knew I had some La Familia over there. Welcome, welcome, Ligia. Looking forward Thank to our you. time together. Uh, uh, you look uh, beautiful, and I know we're going to have a powerful time together. Uh, and then also, uh, right here in Los Angeles, uh, we have uh, Melissa Shepard-Williams, uh, who's joining us. She's a, um, a psychotherapist and uh, also on the faculty at Pacific Oaks College. Uh, Melissa, are you here? Welcome, welcome, Good my sister. Good morning. Good morning. I'm so glad to join you today. Yes, yes. Good to see you. Uh, thank you, uh, Melissa, for connecting me with Ligia. And so now we're all connected and uh, it all comes together as we uh, pull in uh, my dear uh, sister and uh, my, uh, my leader, Dr. Melida Harris Barrow. Uh, I believe she's in Panama, too, at this moment. She's the founder and president of the Six Region Global Chamber of Commerce, and we have a huge event coming up in Panama later this month. We're going to talk about this and kind of just tie it all together. And our conversation today is basically uh, starting us, you know, on the journey of what we're going to be, you know, about, you know, later on in Panama. Dr. Melada, are you here with us? I am here, ready. I am ready, ready man. Ready man. Oh, ready woman. All right. My goodness. Uh, <laughs> good to have you. And then uh, Dr. Kimani Norrington Sands, uh, uh, my sister and partner right here in Los Angeles as well. We uh, work together really well. Melissa, Dr. Kimani, uh, and I. Uh, she's a licensed clinical psychologist and an author of Butterfly Landing. Uh, always good to talk with her. I'm so glad she was available today because we're going to 
hit on one of her favorite uh, subject, which is post-traumatic slave syndrome. Yeah, and the global context of that. Dr. Kimani, are you here with us? I am here. I'm here. I'm so happy to be here with you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, I want to I want to say to folk, okay, that that you know if if you see me, you know, not myself, and I'm going a little crazy, whatever is happening with me, if I'm not, if I don't look right. There are two people you got to call. You got to call Dr. Kimani, okay? And you got to call Melissa, okay? So they'll, they'll get me back on track quickly uh, 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 because of who they are and what they do. So I just want to let you all know that, that, that these uh, sisters are, are on it. Uh, so I, I, I trust them as therapists. And so if I'm off track, uh, I can guarantee you they can get me back on track. So I just want to put it out there. And uh, and really appreciate them uh, for that. So let's uh, let's get going here. Um, uh, before we you know kick off you know this mental you know uh, health piece, and I know we have two uh, therapists with us. We'll uh, we'll get into that. I want to start with Lichia. You know, uh, 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 as you kick off Black History Month, uh, uh, and also Dr. Melada will uh, touch on this as well. You know, we know that this whole global context of colorism is key. And I put a post out today to say if we are going to effectively and strategically deal with the ideology and the theology of white supremacy, you know, a part of that is uh, to see how we need to decolonize black identity. This whole thing about colorism, it's everywhere. It's in South Africa. It's in the DR. It's in Haiti. It's in Panama. It's in India, right? It's in the United States. And uh, uh, so this is all part of the tentacles, you know, all that whole, you know, colonization piece. Uh, and it is demobilizing a lot of folk and, and paralyzing a lot of us in terms of our identity, our ability, our activity, and of course, our destiny. Lichia, 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 you are, you are on it, you know, uh, uh, in Panama. I am uh, blessed to have a lot of uh, Panamanian friends, dear friends. Uh, uh, from uh, Panama that, uh, that are like family to me. So uh, can you just tell us a little bit about, you know, the context in uh, uh, Panama and what does it mean to celebrate uh, uh, black history in Panama? Ligia? Thank you again. Good morning to you all. Well, here in Panama, we have started from a, a long time ago uh, to work with um, educating. I think that the most the most important thing for a human being is to be um, knowledgeable, educated in what we are. First, to recognize who we are, the value that we have, and all the struggle and that we have gone through through history for the whole time, more than four hundred years, right? Panama is a, is a multicultural place to live. My country is beautiful, full of many, many people, many ethnicities, many diasporas here. But I need to say that we still are struggling with the um, opportunity to get respected the position as a human being living in a country where we have a lot of other ethnicities. We're still dealing in schools today with our here not being accepted. We are being, um, Panama is very classist. And yes, we do have racism here. I have to say, we do have. Not in the very high degree as in the United States, but we have a certain, it's subtle, but it's right there. And if you know how to, to, to feel it and to um, be aware of it, you can act and um, give people education on it. And that's what I do every day, okay? Um, we don't have, um, as I said before, it's, it's, it's not really into your face, but it will, it, it will happen eventually. And sometimes when you're on the streets, when you go into banks, so for example, you cannot go into a bank uh, with your Afro or with your natural hair 
we're still educating people how to um, accept, understand that this is our here, and this is not uh, this. This is not. Um, we are not going to accept any more changes, any more pressure on this. We were indoctrinated to use here as um, um, as an, an European person. Now here we have, all, or, or here out, but we still need to work on more, teaching everybody about our koi here, uh, our curly here, what does it look like? How is it taken care? Because people still think that it doesn't get wet, it, 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 it doesn't grow, uh, is, it is not beautiful. It is not um, professional. It is not professional. So we are ongoing with education. Melida can 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 also uh, be testimony of this, and we're working hard. Um, I have a company, my company named uh, Barikiwa, and there is where I start teaching people a little bit about our our history, our our, our struggle, everything that our ancestors has gone through so that they can start learning and start understanding. The more you learn, the better you are. Absolutely. The more, the, the better you are, the more you understand, the better you can cope with differences between one another. We are all beautiful and we are all different and we should live together in a, in a community, in a country, in a world where we are all different and we live together as one. Yes. Indeed, indeed, indeed. I mean, uh, there is certainly beauty in our diversity on the one and on the other hand. Uh, uh, um, uh, difference doesn't mean deficient, right? The, 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 the key piece is just that the standard of beauty, the standard of uh, uh, the mark for civilization, of course, has been codified, you know, uh, in so many ways by, you know, white supremacy. And we just have to be real about that. And so this victimization is global. Uh, uh, and so we need to uh, come to terms with ASAP because right now, you know, uh, <laughs> truth be told, you know, it is black folk who are enforcing these uh, these codes of colorism right now. You know, uh, I think somebody called it, you know, um, uh, pedagogy of the oppressed, right, or internalized racism. And we'll get to that in terms of just the danger of that yeah. around self-destruction and the destruction of community. I want to bring in Dr. Malada. You know, uh, uh, at this uh, point, I know the two of us, we've talked about this a lot. And as we prepare yeah. ourselves to come, you know, uh, to uh, 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 Panama later on this month for the journey of reconciliation, you know, before you say right. anything about that, maybe just say a little bit, you know, uh, just about, you know, your sense uh, around how do we uh, come to terms, you know, with this you know, challenge, you know, of colorism and how do we uh, accept and amplify, you know, uh, yes. uh, our blackness uh, as we move forward. Dr. Melida? Well, I think my, my sister is trying to be a little kind. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay. think, I, I think she's being a little kind. I think I'm going to um, express myself in, in, in a way where, uh, based on my experience here in my own country, uh, and I will start off by saying that years ago, uh, when I was, uh, when the census came to my door and uh, they asked me all kinds of questions, the last thing I had to ask them because they didn't ask me my ethnicity. So uh, it took them like 20 minutes, 30 minutes asking me all these questions. And at the end of the day, um, I asked them, but you didn't ask me about my ethnicity. And she said, well, uh, and I said, give me the paper. I want to see what you put. And she had me as other, other. Mm. Uh, she did not put my ethnicity. She did not put black. She put other. In other words, I'm nothing. So um, of course, uh, my brother-in-law, I, I mentioned it to him. He's a, a prominent uh, person here, uh, Alberto Barro, and he had it on the news. I am nothing. So this is why the census is incorrect today, because it seems that there are more um, the, the, uh, the blacks here uh, 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 are the um, in small numbers, when in fact that's not true. 
The thing is, is that Panama, um, uh, and I will go ahead and say it, uh, not everyone is racist here in Panama, but we do have a large number. And that number has been able to keep us in a position where we are today, especially when you talk about Colón and Bocas del Toro and Darien and all these areas. Um, uh, we don't get the same service as we would in Paitia, in Punta Pacifica. And I will tell you also uh, what happened to me because I had a, a condo in Punta Pacifica, Mystic Point. And um, this woman from Mexico a, a lived in the building, lived in the building, and my family uh, was, you know, at the pool. And um, she told the security guard, uh, there's caca in the pool. And uh, he said, uh, well, th that's impossible. So she took him and she said, look. And then he said, ma'am, I don't see any caca in the pool. She said, look at all those black people. That's what I'm referring mm. to. So we, this is not mild. Uh, racism is not anything mild in Panama because if it was m mild, we wouldn't be fighting to be in positions that we should be in. That's number one. Number two, uh, we are always have to struggle to get what we need. Um, we have to be in position. And, and the thing is, is that our mindset also put us in a position in Panama that it's not of uh, something that we want to be, but it's something we were taught. We were not taught of who we are as Black people, as Africans. We are not proud of our hair. We are not proud of our color skin. And I can say that to you because in my family, eh, we have situations where we don't want to marry a Black man. We want to marry a Spanish man as light as he is in order to, for us to have Spanish babies. In other words, self-hate. And we don't realize that is self-hate because this is a natural phenomena that we think it should be. So the reason I am having the journey of reconciliation of Mother Africa in Panama is because we need to know who we are. We are proud people. Um, we have, have the sense of uh, we are not builders anymore. We're not creators anymore. These are things that was instilled in our, in our mind. When, when I was growing up, um, I couldn't speak English in my classroom because it was referred back to blackness. You have to speak Spanish. Today, we still have situation where they're sending the kids home from uh, uh, home from school because they have afros, so they can't wear afros. They have to wear their hair. They have to cut their hair very, very short. I have a nephew that's going through that right now, and the mother refused to do that. So racism is not settle in Panama, subtle in Panama. It's visible, it's alive, and we are the only one that can change that. We have to change our mindset. We have to understand who we are, what we are, what we're capable of doing. And by bringing the kings and queens and other African brothers and sisters to Panama, it will give us a sense of, wow, we have kings and queens in Africa. I thought there were only queens and kings in Europe. But you see, our education have to change. And the only one that can change that education is us. Absolutely. We are the one that have to make that change. Absolutely. And, and, and I mean, we know even in the U.S., there's a huge battle right now in school districts, right? And part of that is to continue the miseducation because, again, That's the right. MO, the MO, the MO of white supremacy, you know, is yes. deception. Uh, it is um, division. Uh, it is distraction. And then it is destruction. That, those are the four, the, the four pillars, you know, of, uh, of white supremacy. You know, uh, 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 it's, it's lying about, you know, uh, who's superior. Uh, and then lying about who's inferior. And once the truth comes out, 
you see, then you got you to gotta deal with it. And we have, to, we have to come to terms with the fact that Western civilization is a thiefdom that is built on the exploitation, you know, uh, of uh, black folk, and that is globally, you know, uh, around. And that's how we have folk in Cologne, right? Because our ancestors were dropped off there even before we got to the, uh, the United States. That then continues with the Monroe document. That then continues with the construction of the, of the Panama Canal, right? And, and how, uh, 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 you know, a paternalism and division and classism, you know, were worked uh, uh, through that. And, and we've, all, we've all fallen for the okie doke. All right. Yeah, so, and just uh, one more thing I want to throw in there. Yes. Um, Lydia and I, uh, we just met actually. Yeah. Uh, and it's such a pleasure to have met my sister because we think alike. Oh my God, it's such a blessing to have a sister that you can have a conversation. And we're having that conversation and, and we're going, yes, 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 yes. And uh, because it's it's a small number, you know. And the small number is only because of our mindset. And that's why Lee and I are click right away because our job now is to present the truth in our community, to especially for our young people. So girl, we have a lot of work to do. <laughs> yes, and, and the okay. good thing about this is you're not alone. Uh, this yes. white supremacy is a global enterprise. Yes. All right. Yes. That means uh, uh, um, decolonizing it and challenging it has to be a global enterprise. That's very, exactly. very important. I mean, this thing is connected from from Southern Africa to North, from South South Africa to North America. It's connected from yes. South America to Central America to you know uh, 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 to everywhere. I mean, I. I, I I celebrate Cinco de Mayo because of uh, 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 of of the impact that black folk had in the liberation of Mexico. Now, a lot of folk don't want to talk about that, you know, but uh, we'll do a show about that, you know, at some point. We do want to, uh, 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 you know, uh, we're going to transition here because I want to get our, our psychologists in here <laughs> because all of this has some psychological impact on all of us. But before we do it, uh, Ligia sent us a beautiful video, you know, around black history and celebrating it in Panama. We want to show that, you know, a video, uh, uh, Ligia, but I'm going to ask you just to set it up for us because it is in Spanish, which is fine, because if you only speak one language, you are in trouble. All right. Uh, <laughs> you need to go ahead and learn another language. And if you're in L.A., hopefully it's Spanish. If you're elsewhere, you can learn Swahili. You can learn a lot of other languages, but monolingualism. All right, is putting you at risk to be left behind uh, in this uh, diverse and multilingual world that we find ourselves in. So uh, let's, uh, uh, Ligia, set this video up for us, and then I'm going to ask uh, Felicia to play it for us. Ligia? Okay, so the video uh, is inviting this month that starts May, which is Black History Month in Panama. It is inviting everybody to search and look for their history, mm -hmm. investigate, read, acknowledge who we are. This is the time to know who we are, to welcome our, our history, everything that is belonging to us. We have to, uh, in, in the video I'm saying, this is the time to bring our lives together. This is the time, not only the month of May is for the, the, the dresses, the colors, the food, the dances. No, it involves a lot of other things. The story that was never told. It is the opportunity now to, for us to just say what happened. This is the other side of the coin. You see, a coin has two sides. The side that was given to us the side that was indoctrinated, the side that was told, that was taught all over the place, it's time for us now to say, hold it. The other side of the story is what I have to tell you. Mm -hmm. So this is the month to, of a welcoming of our reality, our truth, what we have to say. All right. So that people can understand, so that people can learn, because Racism, we do not born racist. Yes. We are taught to be racist. Yes, 
Absolutely. So with education, you can improve yourself. Ashe, so I love it's the basic, the basic of, uh, of the video in Spanish. All right. There's your translation. Let's go to the video and then uh, uh, we'll bring in our, our, our therapists and, and the clinicians in on the other end. Here's the video. Se acerca el mes de mayo y lejos de hablar solamente de nuestras comidas, de nuestros vestidos, de los colores, de los sabores y de tantas cosas que hablamos todos los años, este año quiero invitarlos a que se cambie un poquito la narrativa a que sepamos más de nuestra historia, más de nuestros colonizadores, más de las cosas que sucedieron que no se contaron, que la narrativa dé una vuelta nueva y que se escuche el lado que nosotros debemos contar. Contémosles esas historias a nuestros hijos, a nuestros nietos y cambiemos toda la narrativa que una vez se contó. Bienvenidos a este mes, el mes de la historia, el mes de la verdad, El mes de nuestra vida, el mes en que todas las cosas deben cambiar de hoy en adelante. Ubuntu, yo soy porque ustedes son. Barikiwa, feliz mes de la etnia. Okay, of course, when I heard Ubuntu in there, I said, I know exactly what she's talking about. <laughs> so that's great. Thank you, Ligia. That was awesome. We're going to... Uh, uh, that's now, you know, memorialized as part of this. I want to bring in our um, uh, um, um, our clinicians, you know, uh, uh, in this. I mean, uh, both, uh, um, you know, uh, Dr. Kimani and Melissa, we, we've had several conversations around this. We've, did, we've done, the, you know, uh, the Colored Girls series that BET did, um, and, and we, we go through this on a constant basis just around you know, how do we deconstruct blackness? And of course, you know, here in the United States, you know, we, 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 we've gone through several, you know, configurations, you know, of how uh, uh, um, uh, uh, black folk, you know, um, are named and, you know, folk go back and forth around that. But I think, you know, because it's, it's, it's Mental Health Awareness Month, we want to really get into the psychological impact of this. I mean, the trauma that it causes, right? This whole thing about double consciousness way back, and now, of course, the young people talk about code switching, right? Uh, uh, and this, this continues to be a huge challenge for us, you know, uh, and I know, uh, Dr. Kimani, you have done some work around, you know, uh, with, with Dr. DeGru, you know, around post-traumatic slave syndrome, and then, uh, Melissa, you've done some work around the concept that you've worked on uh, around, you know, a frozen pain and just the impact, you know, of all of this. So I want to, you know, uh, maybe, you know, I'm going to start with Melissa uh, uh, again as a black immigrant in the United States like myself and how we have to navigate, you know, um, 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 you know, so much. I always say for us, it's not about triple consciousness, right? As a black immigrant for me in America, it's about quadruple consciousness, right? I got to deal with four different <laughs> layers you know, I have to work through, especially coming from South Africa and the trauma of apartheid there and recovering from post-apartheid, you know, uh, uh, stress syndrome, you know, uh, around that. So, you know, let me, Melissa, just your thoughts, you know, uh, as one from Panama now in the U.S. and doing, you know, uh, uh, therapy with so many, you know, just your thoughts, you know, around, you know, uh, all of this. Well, firstly, I want to thank you for inviting us into this conversation. You do so much work to uh, increase consciousness about our history. I want to uh, thank Dr. Harris Barrow for the powerful work that you've been doing for years, informed not only by your personal experience, but our community, both in Panama and abroad. And Ligia, my sister, doing the work. Uh, I have been uh, away from Panama for so many years. Not that I don't go back, uh, but I'm referring to the fact that I've been living in the U.S. for so many years. Yet I am very well aware of both the subtle racism that Leah was referring to and the in-your-face racism that Dr. Harris Barrow was talking about that has so much to do with how, just like in the U.S., in Panama, there has been systematic oppression. 
where the schools don't teach you about your history and it's intentional to keep a status quo, no different from the U.S. in that regard. And colorism is certainly part of it. Dr. Barrow, you, you were talking about the idea of who to marry and why not to marry, you know, uh, that phrase that we have in Panama and in other countries, uh, mejorar la raza, to improve the race. This false belief that if you uh, get together with someone of a lighter complexion, you're improving the race. Well, that's nothing but colorism, just like here in the U.S. and other countries. Same thing. Same thing. Uh, we've been indoctrinated to believe that the closer we are to white, the better we are. And then we treat our own communities that, that way. We then identify with the aggressor, as Dr. Kamani can attest to when we talk in those terms, identifying with the aggressor. And we treat each other in the way that the oppressor has been treating us for centuries, for centuries. Uh, I, I want to say something about Pastor Sauls, who is, although from South Africa, he is also, a, we, we joke about how he's an honorary Afro-Latino <laughs> because he does so much of this work with us uh, through an organization called International Society of Black Latinos that was created here in LA and I'm a part of it. And we do so much of, of this work as well of, you know, teaching about our history so that we can reconnect with the truth of who we are and move in the world without apologies. We are delicious, we are rich. Our, our history is, is, is full of resilience and we want to make sure that we educate ourselves, like Ligia was saying, so that we, we don't further buy in to the lies that we've been told for generations and moving that pain from one generation to the next. The frozen pain that pa Pastor Sauls was referring to. When we are not conscious of where that comes from, we keep repeating the same patterns. And we, and we hurt each other, not only ourselves. We can go into yeah. so much detail about it, but... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that... <clears throat> Yeah, thanks for that. That frozen pain piece is key, and I hope, uh, Melissa, you'll say a little bit more about that because <clears throat> we see that a lot. Uh, I always say, what you don't process, you will project. Uh, and that's so, so important for us to realize that. Uh, uh, the, per the power and purpose of therapy is to help us process, process what we're going through, you know, uh, uh, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, etc. And that's right. why it's so important to break it down, to be asked why, 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 and, and just do, uh, uh, as Lichia said, just some investigation, right? Some, some interrogation, some excavation, right? Uh, around how do we just uh, understand what's coming at us, how it gets processed, and then how it gets, you know, uh, put, uh, put out there. And I know Melissa and I, we've talked about, you know, uh, uh, the, the incident with, uh, with uh, Chris Rock and Will Smith, you know, uh, and, and, and just the role that, that, um, um, that, that the frozen pain play in that, especially if you read Will Smith's autobiography, right? You will understand, you, it will put into context for you what happened that evening. Uh, and, and, and it boils down to what you don't process, you project, because then it comes out the wrong way at the wrong time uh, 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 to the wrong person and in the wrong place. And in that case, it was a global you know, uh, stage. And so uh, 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 and the challenge of that is it then moves a person from light to dim to dark, right? And so uh, our prayers continue with both Chris and Will around this piece so that uh, they remain you know, uh, uh, in light and, and maybe flirt with them but never go to dark uh, around this. It all connects, you know, uh, Dr. Kimani, with just what we are dealing with in terms of just this post-traumatic, you know, uh, uh, slave syndrome for us in Los Angeles on the 30th commemoration of the 92 
you know, uprising or riots, you know, uh, we're talking about here post-traumatic stress syndrome in the urban context. Uh, you are acutely aware of that. So just a little bit about that. <clears throat> and then, of course, you know, Liha mentioned this hair thing, you know, here in California. You know, uh, my uh, commissioner, former senator, state senator, Harry Mitchell, we did pass the Crown Act. And so we just talked a little bit about that, that, you know, we had to go to legislation, right? to make sure that uh, black folk can wear their hair whatever way they want to not be uh, discriminated or stigmatized, right, or marginalized because of that. So we'll get to that Crown Act, you know, uh, uh, piece. But your thoughts just around, you know, what all of this, you know, uh, is doing to us psychologically and how, what are some tools that we can look at, you know, uh, as we move, as we continue to grow in our resiliency. Dr. Kimani? Well, first, I want to say I just appreciate that we have community here and I love seeing sisterhood um, and action. It's beautiful. Um, and when we think about and I appreciate hearing about the experiences in Panama because it reminds me and it uplifts me, but it also saddens me that we see how white supremacy has been impacting and oppressing us on a global scale. And so part of what's important psychologically is that we understand that we need psychological liberation. So it's not just physical liberation. We need that too, right, in terms of rights and access. But we also need psychological liberation. And for psychological liberation, we need to understand what is the lie and what is the truth, right? And I think many times we're disconnected from that. And post-traumatic slave syndrome really connects us to what is the source of our pain? Right. So if we're really trying to address and heal first, we need to recognize we've been harmed and why have we been harmed and ways that we are continually being harmed. So in, in a sense, it's not even post because we're still being harmed. So we need to have some acknowledgement of that and also recognize in what ways that we as a people have internalized some of these negative messages. So the divide and conquer and what ways have we internalized this view in terms of, you know, if you're a certain skin color or if you're a certain social economic class or whatever that is, that's divide and conquer. So we have to recognize the purpose of divide and conquer, where that came from, and ways that we as a people have internalized these negative oppressive messages. And it plays out in skin color comments. It plays out in, you know, I can't talk to you because you're from this class. We don't say it in that way, but in terms of our behavior. And we have to recognize that that was in the past divide and conquer, but it's being maintained through social programming. So listen to our music, right? Listen to what the young people are listening to. Look at the images that we're seeing. And even with the Chris Rock, Will Smith issue, look at how that's even been addressed, right? And so it's so many things that we need to unpack and be aware of and that we don't just suck in, you know, and take in all the social programming, that we come to a space that we say, wait a minute, what's going on here and what's impacting my mental health? What's contributing to that, right? So first, you know, we have to recognize that we've been harmed, right? So I, I heard a young lady say, and I always quote her, she said, you can't heal what you don't reveal, right? So if we don't recognize that we're hurting or we're big or we're harmed, that's that's a problem, right? Because then we start engaging in behavior. So we're disconnected from ourselves, we're disconnected from one another, we're disconnected from our culture. So I love what you're doing, Dr. Harris Barrow, in terms of reconnecting to the truth, right? And also, you know, like yeah, in terms of Yes, we need to have education in terms of what is happening and how do we reconnect to our greatness, right? So individually and culturally, how do we reconnect to our greatness? So that's number two. So how are we recognizing and valuing ourselves, recognizing the source of our harm, but also how are we healing by building upon sense of community, you know, sense of understanding our interconnected realities, understanding our cultural forms of healing. So there's a lot that needs to be done, but I'm hopeful because I think we're having more conversations. I think we're more aware of what's happening and conversations like this allow us to see this is a global problem, right? So when we see it's a global problem, then we're able to unify across the world about, hey, this is a problem and we're not having this and we're standing up in terms of educating 
you know, uh, being kind to one another, addressing our own internalized oppression. If that is talking to one another, if that's going to therapy, whatever that is, but we need to address that. So it's not that generational transmission. So from the grandmother to the mother to to the child, Mm -hmm. right? So how are we disrupting these cycles? And again, you know, really being clear with, you know, what are the contextual factors impacting our mental health and taking steps to really address that. Um, And as you mentioned, the Crown Act, right? So how are we mobilizing together to say, no, this is not right. And we will no longer be oppressed. So in terms of us standing in our full glory and being proud of our full glory and demanding that others respect us as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you said a lot of things right there, Doc, you know, uh, just in terms of, you know, uh, the acknowledgement of being harmed, right? Uh, 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 Bridging to connect with self and self value. And then, you know, uh, 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 connecting, you know, with sources for healing and then develop uh, a community uh, of resiliency and dignity uh, for us. That's A, B, C, D. There you have it, all right, uh, in terms of that. So so that's so powerful. I, I really appreciate the fact of this, you know, uh, uh, this, this, this whole piece of psychological liberation, right? Uh, because uh, uh, we, we all get caught up in classism. We all get caught up in, you know, uh, paternalism, you know, uh, which is what it was in, in South Africa in so many ways. Uh, 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 and then, of course, we get caught up in this caste system, right, that, uh, uh, that, we, are, uh, that we are dealing with. Uh, that's not just present in India, all right, but just truth be told, folk travel with that stuff all over the world. So, so, so British, British colonialism basically, you know, exploited uh, that caste system and then exported it all over the world, okay? So uh, so we have to understand the layers of how all of these things work, and we have to work to deconstruct it, and through that, you know, decolonizing it. There are various ways of doing this, and it has to be done on an ongoing basis. Uh, uh, folk did not rest in their colonization. We cannot rest in our liberation. That's very, very, in our fight for liberation. That's very, very important. I mean, the colonizers talk with each other whether it was the folk colonizing North Africa and the folk colonizing Southern Africa. And, and you know, they were all talking. Well, I mean, ha, 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 you know, the folk in the, ha, ha, how do you keep them down? You know, send us some strategies, right? Uh, and that's why, you know, uh, that letter that, uh, <laughs> that was sent out, you know, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that basically, you know, described how do you not just, you know, uh, keep a slave down, right? But how do you use a slave to keep other slaves down? You can use the same thing right now, right now in terms of, you know, uh, how people use, you know, uh, blackness, you know, around that. So, so, the, so, so, so not only are we in an inflection point in the United States, I contend we are in an inflection point in the whole world. And this war in Ukraine is just a tip of the iceberg, people. It is just a tip over the iceberg, one such an event that's coming up that I am so proud to be a part of is the Journey of Reconciliation, you know, uh, that's sponsored by the Sixth Region Global Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Dr. Melada, you know, is the uh, founder and president of it. I'm going to ask her to say a little bit about, you know, that is coming up, you know, later on this month. And uh, we're going to be dealing with the whole person there, right? Psychologically, spiritually, economically, et cetera, et cetera, starting from, you know, uh, connecting uh, uh, reconciliation, of course, in so many ways, uh, with long-term sustainable uh, 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 equity, the work of long-term sustainable equity, reparative justice, as well as restorative justice. So uh, it's a whole lot going that's going to be going on over there. Dr. Malada, tell us a little bit about the vision for this, uh, what's coming up, and why you're talking. We're going to put some images up, you know, uh, of you know uh, uh, the event, so that folk can uh, get a sense of it. But would you want to just share a little bit about it, and then we're going to come back around and um, yeah. uh, and hit some closing remarks and next steps from uh, all of our other panelists, Dr. Melida? Sure, sure. Uh, first of all, I I want to say that uh, this was a vision from God three years ago that He placed on my mind and heart and soul, and now it's a reality. It's no longer a vision. 
uh, the journey of reconciliation of the Mother Africa and her diaspora will be held in Panama from May 19th to the 25th of this year. Uh, we are promoting this all over the world. We have been promoting it for a year. And uh, the journey, I'm calling it the journey because it's a journey. It will never, ever stop. Uh, this journey will be all over the world. It's being started in Panama. Uh, this program will unite the kings and queens of Africa as well with the African diaspora around the world. Um, it's going to be an academic program featuring forums about Africa, the Americas, and the Caribbean before slavery and colonialization, uh, col colonialism, as well as slavery. Uh, this is going to also include, um, when I talk about colonialism, it's going to be also uh, about the transatlantic commerce. We're going to be talking about that and the Youth and Women Empowerment Forum we're going to have. Uh, we're also having uh, a ceremony of reconciliation and healing. Healing, healing will be conducted by uh, his uh, Royal Highness Oni of Ife Adeyeye. Um, we also have uh, many other uh, kings and queens that's going to be participating. I just want to inject something. Um, actually, Africa and the sixth region, the sixth region, for those that don't know, is all of us outside of Africa, even during uh, when they came and they took our brothers and sisters from Africa. But one thing I want to also say is that also kings uh, participated in the slave trade, but there is a but. They never thought that this would have happened the way it happened. It was vicious, both sides, colonialism and also slavery. It is the most important event. It's historical in the American continent as it will allow mutual, mutual recognition and the encouragement of agreements, cultural and economic exchange, trade agreements, and diplomatic ties that can promote business investment that benefit both Africa and the diaspora. It is important also for you to know that the main reason for this vision is because, is because I believe, honestly, when God gave me this vision, I believe that God is watching us, how we're killing each other, how we're not communicating with each other. I believe also that the time is now because if we don't do something, we're going to go another 400 and something years. I do believe that. And God knows that. And that's why God, this is why I tell people all the time, when God gives you a vision, a mission, a purpose, you have to do it. You, ju you just have to do it. Because what you are doing, if you don't do it, you're delaying the process. No matter how big it seems, God already know you can do it. You know why he know that you can give it, do it? It's because he gave it to you. He knows who you are. He knows that you're capable of doing it. And I believe, and I, I really never thought that when I knocked the doors of the kings and queens, I thought there would be a rejection. But let me tell you something. When I started out, they were saying, yes, Dr. Barrow, it is time. I'm in. Now, I'm not knocking the doors. They're knocking our doors. But you know why they're knocking the doors now? It's because it's something spiritual. This is all spiritual. This is not an event. This is not a program. This is a journey. It's a journey. And that journey is going to be Starting in Panama, we're going to America, we're going to the Caribbean, and then we go back to Africa. By then, the continent should be aware of who they are now. 
And then after that, we are going to, we're going to go all over the world. And my sisters, let me tell you something. You are going to be part of this. Because when we travel, we're traveling together. Ex the experience that we're having, that we have in America, we're going to share it in Africa. They need to know what we know. And we need to know what they know. The other thing. They've been colonialized, we've been enslaved. Same thing. It's the same thing. We've been mentally abused. We've been physically abused. We've been abused, testing us with all kinds of diseases. And guess what? We're still here. All the things that they have done in the United States. They put us on a tree and hang us and have a picnic under the body. We have been through hell and came back. And when I say came back, we're back. But we are back in order to fix this. You see, when you liberate your mind, you are no longer a beggar. You are a builder. You are a creator. Your mind now is thinking differently because you have now purged all the things that you were taught. That's why they come and say, Latina, no, I am not Latina. I was born in Latin America, but I'm an African woman. You understand? Don't call me Latina, Afro-Latina. What is that? Hmm? Afro-Panamanian, Afro-Latina. You can provide and dictate the name that you want to dictate to us. That keeps us enslaved mentally because you will never discover who you are. But when you purge and when you reject what your oppressors have named you and you come back and say, I'm an African woman born in Panama. Now you are telling them I'm awake. You understand? So we need to stop embracing all things that's been given to us by the oppressors and begin to speak about truth because the truth is what's going to set us free. Not to continue their legacy. We have to build our legacy. We have to tell our stories. I'm tired of people telling my story. I'm going to tell you my story. I don't want you to define me. I can define myself now that my mind is free. This is why the journey of reconciliation is about healing. It's about loving yourself because once you love yourself, you love me. All the hate, all those things that we have within, it is by design. You understand? Mm -hmm. That's why I tell my African brothers and sisters, how dare you call me a foreigner? I am your sister. Mm. This is why the healing has to start now. I am not your foreigner. When you come to America, you believe and you act and you imitate like your oppressors towards me. That's over. Yeah. You are African, I'm African. Look at me. What do you see? A Latina? Or do you see an African woman? And yes. that's what we need to do. We yes. need to speak and stop being afraid to tell the world who you are. And women, we are so empowered, but we have to go out there in the world and let the world know who we are. Men, stop pushing me away from you. I am your woman. Mm -hmm. I am your queen. Mm -hmm. Start acting like it. Because you cannot solve the problems by yourselves. You need us right next to you. And that is the problem that is happening today. That's why the journey of reconciliation, there are kings and queens that are coming. There are diplomats that are coming. There are presidents that are coming. It is time now for us to sit down and talk about what we are going to do on a round table. This is not a conference. Right. This is an action that we're putting down in order for us to trade, in order for us to talk to our children and stop waiting till your children graduate from college to tell them who they are and what they ought to be doing. 
Right. When we talk about our education, that the school is not educating us, we need to educate our children of the truth. Don't expect your oppressor to educate your children for them to free themselves. It's never going to happen. We need right. to come back to realization. Right. We right. cannot beg your oppressor because what he's going to teach me is to serve him. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So thank you. That's that's. I know, I know. Look, we can go on and on and on and on and on. Doc. I'm sorry. You know, no, 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 no. You, 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 you said it, and I think, you know, uh, the, 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 the passion, you know, uh, is celebrated and appreciated, because we have for too long, uh, we had people who were more passionate about acquiescing to their oppression, right, rather than focusing on their liberation. Come on now. And, and, and so we come up with things like, you know, uh, to be yellow, uh, you know, uh, is mellow, right? Uh, to be white is right. And to be back black, you got to get to the back. We've come up with all of these destructive and divisive, you know, um, uh, um, behaviors that perpetuate the ideology and the theology, you know, of, you know, of, of, of white supremacy in terms of that. And so uh, 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 the African proverb clearly states, until the lion learns how to write, ev uh, 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 write learns to write their, his own story, every story will glorify the hunter. Now let me just kind of flip that around, right? Until black folk learn to write our own story, <coughs> right? Every story will glorify white folk. That's why folk are scared of critical race theory. You see? We're not changing the facts. Think, we bring I a different that, uh, methodology word, of, how to, uh, uh, of how to, you know, uh, uh, investigate, uh, uh, interrogate, and excavate, you know, uh, the truth. Because you and I know, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Freedom is based on truth and not deception. Freedom is based on truth and not lies, and that's what it's uh, about. I want to uh, uh, give uh, our, um, our our three other you know speakers just uh, uh, each a, a minute just for some concluding remarks. And while we do that, I'm going to ask Felicia just to uh, scroll once again those images of the upcoming conference so that folk can see that uh, and 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 make sure that you get the information you know uh, uh, for that. Uh, but let's uh, let's let me uh, go back. Lichia, we we are about to come, you know, uh, uh, you know, to uh, to the land of your birth, and uh, looking forward to meeting you in person as you're being with you, uh, where we will continue this conversation as well as a conversation yes, around mental, you know, health. Just some uh, thanks for being here, and just some concluding, you know, uh, remarks from you. Well, thank you again, Pastor Sol, for having us here. It has been a pleasure for me to share with all these beautiful women with all my sisters, you know, this stage. And I think the word here, and I told Dr. Merida Sunday when I met her, the word is decoding. Uh -huh. The word. We are to start decoding. As soon as we do that, we're going to be able to do everything else. But we need to decode. And we need to heal at the same time. But the word is decode. All right. Great, great. Thank you so much, Lichia. Uh, let me uh, go to Melissa. Uh, just some concluding uh, thoughts from you, and then we'll bring in Dr. Uh, Kimani. Well, I think this has been a powerful uh, morning. I am, My heart is full, and I'm thankful for everything that's happening in this journey of healing. Um, as, as you shared earlier, Pastor Sauls, I, I get to work with clinicians in training. And where we work, we are all about studying our diaspora. Last weekend, we had our graduation of all Black therapists. And we talked about duenimen, strength and humility. And that no matter where in the diaspora we are born, no matter what language we speak from colonizers and enslavers, at the end of the day, we are African, African. And the people whose healing journeys we're supporting need to see themselves in us. 
Absolutely. It's, 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 it's quite a, a road of healing that we're on. And I'm thankful that uh, the pandemic has, has placed a magnifying lens on the healing that needs to be done. And we're talking about it. We're talking about it and we're acting on it. This is beautiful. And this, this is a blessing. So, uh, you know, generations of pain are healing right now. Amen. Right now. Got to deal with a generational trauma. Uh, yes. As I always say, you know, I'm still in recovery from post-traumatic apartheid syndrome, right? Uh, uh, because uh, uh, them oppressors, them white folk, make sure that it ran real deep. And they were not alone. There were a lot of folk who looked like me that conspired with them uh, uh, to do that. Uh, uh, Dr. Kimani, uh, your thoughts, you know, uh, as yes. we uh, seek to recover, uh, uh, rethink, reposition, and relaunch uh, ourselves, you know, uh, as uh, men and women created in God's image uh, and understanding our identity, our ability, as well as our destiny. Yes. First, I want to say the power of this conversation in terms of us being in community and to remind each other of the importance of this work and the importance of all of us working together to really address our healing. Right. So I just want to say, first of all, I appreciate the space. The other thing is that healing is an ongoing journey and that the one thing about this pandemic is that particularly for black people, I think it's really opened our eyes that we are really hurting. Right. And we really need healing. And so that's the one thing that I've seen out of this pandemic, that more black people are becoming more vocal and aware of their own need for healing and seeking mental health treatment. So my, my one thing that I want to say is that healing is possible. Right. We need to recognize that our healing is really uh um, based upon an understanding that we are grounded in greatness. So even though society tries to tell us that we're less than, we have to reject that lie, right? And the truth is that we are grounded in greatness. So that's the core of our healing. And then the other part is, you know, this is an ongoing journey because we are continually assaulted, right? So the healing is never just over, like I, I'm healed. It's an ongoing process because we're constantly under attack and that there are resources for us to get the healing. So Melissa, me, you know, there's other Black healers out here to support your healing. And so if you're trying to find a therapist, you know, if you're in the United States or elsewhere, you know, please just Google Black therapists near me, right? And also if you're not able to find a therapist in your area, we do have organizations like the Association of Black Psychologists, the National Association of Black Social Workers. So there's organizations who are also about healing. And so it's important for us to take that next step because dismantling and addressing internalized oppression is hard because we all have it. Mm -hmm. We all have taken mm -hmm. in some of the social programming and we have to be very diligent about addressing and confronting it and getting the help if we need it and supporting our sisters and brothers and getting the help and support because we need our what our minds to be okay. We need that psychological liberation to really support our community liberation as well. I love that. Dr. Melida, uh, can you give us the website uh, of, you know, where we can get more information about the conference? And then, uh, Melissa, you're going to close us out. Dr. Melida? Okay, maybe we lost her. Uh, Melissa, you said you had one more thing to add. Oh, I had the mute, the mute on. Sorry about that. Oh, okay. Um, Just yes. to, yeah. Uh, it's the six, the six th six region global chamber of commerce dot org. That is our website, and um, once you come on our website, you will get additional information. Great. Yeah. And we'll we'll have all of these when we have get the uh, edited version of you know today's podcast. I will have all of those you know uh, in there uh, for you. Uh, uh, Melissa, did you have anything else that you want to add finally as we close out? Just briefly, and I I know that uh, my colleague Kimani can attest to this. Although the two of us are here representing therapists. We, we definitely, and we've had so many conversations about it privately, we definitely uh, make sure 
to, to clarify that in our work, we honor the healing traditions of our ancestors. Mm -hmm. You know, this clinical training with its European roots, we have dismantled. We make sure that if we're going to be part of this healing process, we honor, we include, we contextualize the healing process by honoring our own history of healing traditions that we move in the world already doing healing things unconsciously. We want to make those things conscious, Mm -hmm. intentional. Our ancestors are full of healing traditions. Yes. Yes. And that's at the center of our work. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And it's for uh, such a time as this that our ancestors lived for and died for. And uh, uh, healing is possible um, because uh, we are all grounded in greatness. It is all hands on deck when it comes to working towards our healing and our transformation. Healing, uh, sisters and brothers, is not a spectator uh, experience. It calls for our full participation. You have to participate in your own healing. Others can heal on your behalf. That's very, very important, right? Uh, uh, and, and, and to be able to do that, proximity has power. You got to get close to the harm and the pain that's been done to you. That's very, very important. That's what Dr. Kimani said. You have to acknowledge the fact that you've been harmed, right? And so uh, it's, it's difficult. It's tough. It's hard. You know, yeah, I can attest to that. But I can tell you one thing, uh, the closer you come to your harm and your pain, that pain will become a path to new possibilities for you. The harm will bridge you to the hope that you need to have. Uh, I want to thank all those who join us on Facebook and on YouTube. You know, uh, some of those comments, you know, uh, uh, are so deep and profound, uh, using slaves to keep other slaves down. Uh, thank you, Yogi Fish. Uh, he affirmed that uh, y'all told some 100% truth today. Uh, uh, and I hope that that question, how we are helping white supremacy by our destructive behavior towards each other, that's called internalized racism. All right. Until we, even as black folk, you know, uh, become anti-racist, especially towards other black folk, uh, we will always uh, be part of the problem. And uh, what we want to do here at Trade Without Borders is to invite folk to be part of the solution as we move forward. It is all about creating Ubuntu, beloved community, Uhuru. Thanks for joining us today. Lichia uh, Grinnell, thank you so much, my sister. Melissa Shepard-Williams, we appreciate you. Dr. Melda Harris-Barrow, uh, I love you and uh, uh, give a thanks for you. Looking forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks in Panama. Yes. And then Dr. Kimani Norton sends. Uh, as always, you all have been extraordinary. I wasn't surprised, and I'm grateful. <laughs> Let's continue to move towards beloved community. One love.